uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning and um, we are going to be talking about the different charts and features that we offer as uh, Vitara charts, which is an add-on to MicroStrategy and give you various tips and tricks and ideas about sprucing up your dashboards with these charts. For those of you that have already seen Vitara charts, you'll still see a lot of new features that we've added because this is very much a living, breathing software, which we keep enhancing with every release that we have. So I'm going to be showing you a lot of these new features. If, you, if you've seen this you know, a year ago or two years ago, you will have something new. And if you haven't seen it before, you know, just sit tight because you're in for a treat. So let's get uh, going, we'll talk a little bit about what is the idea behind Vitara Chats, and then right after that, we will jump into the live demo. Uh, just some logistics that we can take care of before we get going. If you have questions, please do send them through the chat window. I have muted the lines because we do have a pretty large uh, gathering today, so it will get um, unmanageable to keep all the lines open. But I am very open to taking questions as we go through the presentation. I will be checking the chat window for questions periodically so feel free to type any questions or comments that you have throughout all right so you know how does how does Vitara chats come into play why is it relevant um, I, I think you know people tend to think that it's the competitive tools maybe like a tableau and a click who have done a lot in the visualization space that forces uh, to you know create something like this but the reality is that everywhere around us, not just other BI tools per se, but every piece of data that we observe around our, our environment today is presented as a visualization, something very interactive, something that you can relate to, whether it's political data, sports data, weather data. And uh, given that level of interactivity with the visualization, users have become much more um, you know, savvy about what options they would like to use in their dashboard and the demands uh, for the visualization uh, options has become insatiable. So it doesn't necessarily mean something more complex or something very, very convoluted. It's really uh, all the visualizations that you're used to seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, but how do we make them more interactive? That's our fundamental driving uh, philosophy, is that we want to make it more user-friendly, we want to make it more intuitive, and we want to give users much, much more options to customize the visualizations and make it their own. And how do we do that? So we have created a base of 30 plus charts. These charts, as I said, are living, breathing charts, which we keep enhancing. So for those of you that have seen, you know, version one of Vitara charts to now, you know, four years later, you will see that we've enhanced each chart significantly. Um, and this is something that's easy. So anybody can just plug and play. This is fully ready to use. We've made it free for desktop users. So for those of you just wanting to explore it, you don't even have to you know, get a license key or a trial version. You can just download and use it right off the bat. And for those of you that are wanting to use it commercially in a corporate environment, you can always reach us to you know, kind of get a trial key, set it up, and get up and running in a matter of minutes. And we fully support it. So regardless of which version of MicroStrategy you are on or wherever you are on. It doesn't really matter if you're doing mobile, you're doing web, you're on a particular kind of operating system. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Wherever MicroStrategy works, Vitara Charts will work. Now, MicroStrategy has tremendous market cre uh, credibility with regard to a lot of uh, strengths in BI, like the scalability aspect as an enterprise BI tool, um, as you know, as an extremely you know stable interface, and also being cutting edge from the mobile reporting standpoint. So we we recognize those trends and we view ourselves as a very complementary tool that. Uh, you know, provides support and enhances the look and feel aspect of it. So that's kind of where we come in as a technology partner to MicroStrategy. So with that, uh, the rest of what I'm going to show you is going to be a demonstration. Um, the way I, I, I want to start off today is, um, you know, in the recent past, uh, Financial Times has, has released uh, uh, what you might call as a dictionary. Uh, they called it the um, visual vocabulary. 
and they have distributed uh, charts into categories and so if you want to see you know part to whole uh, kind of analysis what are the types of charts that would be useful what is a pro and con for each chart um, so they've done this exercise in a very exhaustive way and it's been really uh, kind of eye opening for a lot of people to kind of go through that uh, so several users uh, particularly some leaders in the in the visualization space for tableau for power bi for click what they've done is they've taken this as a framework and created these charts to showcase the capabilities for those tools so when we looked at those we felt you know we can very easily do this in micro strategy as well and have comparable if not better presentation when you combine micro strategy with vithara charts so i'm going to show you a lot of these you know basic chart ideas these are not complicated charts you know let's let's look at ranking we all rank our items um, where whatever type of reporting we are doing, whether we are doing it in the context of you know, healthcare reporting, financial services reporting, top five regions, top five products, these are very understandable, relatable things that we put up, right? So these are the ranking options that Financial Times says are, are a great way to show how things are performing. Now, what are the few things that stand out for you? There's something called this lollipop chart, which looks different, this bump chart looks different, and this dot strip chart looks different. But when you break each of these charts down from a Vitara standpoint and from a micro strategy standpoint, they are quite simple. This is really, you know, a, a stacked bar chart. And in the stacked bar chart, instead of seeing the bars and the vertical bars, um, you are just seeing the uh, dots, in, dots instead or dots or circles instead. So how do we um, create that? We have a new feature in Vitara charts where you can replace uh kind of the existing um bar bars or lines or what have you with uh custom markers so the idea there is you take something like a stacked bar and each of the bars um components can be replaced with a circle image so i'm just uh, i got logged out earlier this is going to be a live demo so please bear with me so um, when we are doing uh, ranking, which we are right here, um, all you have to do is first create your uh, simple stacked bar, and then you just uh, configure your custom marker to make it a circle uh, to get what the financial services, uh, financial times calls as a dot uh, strip bar. And it, gave, it gives you um, the density and the distribution as well as the ranking of the different categories. And of course, you can color each category differently as well. From a look and feel standpoint, we try to stay consistent with some of what the other competitors had done, which I'll show you in a bit. But I want to show you how easy it is to change any of these data markers, uh, which are you know currently represented as circles uh, to what was originally a bar or a line chart, right? So this is a column chart and I click apply and you'll see it changes to a column. So we've just replaced that and put it in place to get this look and feel uh, for the um, dot stripe chart. And the same thing, if you look at it in Tableau or Power BI looks something like this. You know, you have the dot stripe and the exact same look and feel has been created within MicroStrategy looking something like this, right? So if you look at, in a similar way, uh, another kind of analysis, which is you know, this arc chart. This is a Power BI page, and this is the um, MicroStrategy page, courtesy of Vitara charts. And you can see that it, the look and feel is actually equivalent or better. Um, similarly, if you look at uh, just Google Visual Vocabulary Tableau, you will probably land on uh, something like this. And as you go through each of these uh, examples in Tableau as well, you'll you'll notice that extremely similar or better look and feel has been, um, you know, is possible uh, by creating them uh, inside using Vitara charts. Now, how do we make that possible? Let's kind of go through some of the basic charts and understand what are the features that are available in Vitara charts that make this possible and so easy to do, right? So let's take a simple uh, pie chart or a donut chart. So first of all, we keep it very, very interactive. So you can kind of click on each piece. Um, this one is actually the, the, the drill was enabled here for me to show you. So let me just hover over it and see. So in addition to the usual features, we have the option of setting up drills um, on all our basic charts. And when you set up something like a drill here, you have the option of showing that in a 
preview button also. So you can configure your drills on all basic charts and say, show this um, drill type as a line, bar, column, what have you, and then show it in a preview. So you don't even have to go into the detail page. As you hover, you will start to see the details. You can click on it to get to the details. And if you don't want to work with the details and you have you know, seen what you need to, but then get back to the higher level view, you can very easily do that as well. In addition, you can configure the data labels. I think the the flexibility in the data labels is something that is often requested and you will notice that in the financial times vocabulary as well they try to show both the percentage and the value so you can go and configure your data label so you can say not just the point value but show me also the point percentage and you can click apply and turn on the data labels which have been turned off so once you turn those on that's possible and you can configure not just the detail data labels but you can even some you know customize the center data label so if you just want to display your uh, company name here you could do that in the center or put up a little background image there or if you want to do your detailed data label uh, you could do both your point value and point percentage you can format it if you want to put additional language in here that's possible too and if you want to make it a dynamic text and put in the category that this belongs to, that can be applied as well. So this is all uh, common requests that we get. And these features that I'm showing you chart by chart are applicable across the board. So if I'm showing you flexibility in data labels, drillability in the pie chart, the same thing would be applicable in a bar chart, in a bubble chart, what have you. The idea is to give you the information about the possibilities for the chart. So you can then take that and look at the um, other charts that would be suitable for your specific scenario and apply that. This is an Another case where we have uh, a simple bubble chart, the same exact chart, you're looking at two different perspectives. One, you have some play animation over here, which is helping you kind of see, you know, year over year, month over month, how that same data is changing. This is a snapshot perspective. So to be able to get both of these, we have simple drag and drop. We have additional, you know, kind of drop boxes for the um, play axis where you can either use something in the play axis drop zone, or if you feel that is unnecessary, you can remove it. So it's a very optional add-on choice that is available. And in a lot of cases, it might be very intuitive to show variation in time using an animated button but if you don't want to and if you'd like to you know go with something more traditional uh, but yet have the flexibility to modify things um, like we have done with the dot stripe chart that we were looking at earlier uh, you could just use existing features such as you know plot lines and custom markers that you're seeing here so we've drawn plot lines to show the top 10 percentile and colored the background green so if you want to go with the bottom uh, 10 percentile and color the background red very very easy to kind of go into your threshold now instead of saying above the line you can now say below the line create the once you've created those threshold and your lines is very very easy to do something like that and um, give the context um, to the users so they can easily understand what are the outliers what actions need to be taken and if they're looking at data like this which is pretty dense and you want to see more detailed version of the data we also have the option of zooming in so all our charts you have the option of pinch and zoom very very similar to the action you take on your mobile devices where you could just simply you know pinch zoom or reset back to the um, original scaling to be able to kind of look at this holistically this is in addition to the drill uh, configuration so once you configure the drill that is a different kind of feel that you might want on a one dashboard on a different dashboard you might want to keep it at a specific level but be able to kind of zoom in and zoom out of the data the other thing that you would be constantly kind of looking to do is established con you know specific context to your users which is where the uh, custom markers come in earlier we were giving you a set of custom markers that you had to kind of pick from a list of custom markers so these are the lists that we have added based on industry in addition to these now with threshold based custom markers we also allow you to to kind of create um, your own um, custom markers as well so you can go into this and add your own custom images and custom markers as well so if you go to our 
um, online gallery, for example, you would see a lot of examples which we which we have created using uh, specific custom markers, particularly in the current crisis. There are some very serious and and sometimes um, you know some irrational uh, behavioral patterns from customers so for example during earlier part of the crisis there was some severe toilet paper shortage so we took the data about toilet paper usage across the world in different countries and we mapped it out on a simple bar chart but to give more context to the data what we had done is taken the custom marker and created it as a toilet paper roll and that gets repeated across the bar chart so you just go into your bar chart um, as i was doing earlier and select that particular series and um, make that into you know a custom bar uh, custom uh, icon there and that's get that fills it up with the bar chart. We were doing something similar with automobile sales, and uh, there also we were able to put in images of cars, uh, for example, or if you are trying to track sales for a specific product or product type, um, this would be another indicator. Or if you are trying to analyze some kind of HR data or survey data, uh, you know, you could replace that with human figure symbols, which we um, already have as a part of our you know, common things that we supply along with the install base. So this has been a very uh, small enhancement, but it's made a huge impact in terms of the way in which you can present your uh, simple charts by personalizing it to the industry, to the report, to the particular um, department even that you are creating it for, right? So this is another feature that is new. So for those of you who've worked with Vitara Chats before um, or who have been, you know, haven't seen it in, in some time, this is one of those features that's, that, that's definitely made a big difference uh, to the look and feel. A lot of times I also get questions, how does Vitara Chats play with MicroStrategy? Uh, very, very well. As you can see, we are using the latest 2020 version for the demo. You can see the interplay of charts. You can pre the, see the freeform layout, the background image, all of it works you know very seamlessly with each other so going back to you know what are some of the things that you can configure and how we have done it so i think we were looking at um, these different charts that we have over here um, and we were comparing uh, and contrasting how those things got created so whenever we try to create you know this kind of uh, a lollipop chart or a dot stripe chart these are very simple modifications to existing charts whether it's a stack chart whether it's a bar chart whether this one is like a bump chart is like actually a slope chart um, you just you know pick your basic chart analyze and break down how it's been constructed in this case it's simple bars but at the end they have a custom marker of a circle so we were able to modify our simple uh, vitara charts to get the exact um, kind of look and feel that was um, suggested so these are um, some of the enhancements definitely not all of the enhancements that are available um, in the basic vitara charts um, if you want to explore any of these charts further there are a couple of different ways to do it one is uh, go to our website vitarachats.com pretty easy to remember and from here you can click on the gallery so everything that i'm showing you today is from our online gallery it is just a public uh, micro strategy cloud and you can see all our different demonstrations over there you can see the different makeovers we do this is usually like we take some current topics and we build micro strategy dashboards based on the current topics and leverage and show you know how how beautifully we can use some of the visualizations to to get the point home so that's that's one option you can look at the visual vocabulary uh, by different subject area they're available over here so you can kind of browse through that it will give you a lot of ideas when you're trying to build net new dashboards as well, you know exactly the type of analysis you're trying to do. And based on the you know, type of analysis, you can very quickly say, oh, I can pick chart X, Y, or Z. So this is the, the best way and the most interactive way to explore the different options with Vitara. But if you just uh, want to quickly share with somebody who's non-technical, but just want to get ideas on what are the possibilities, again, you can go to our website and from our website we have video demos so you can click on these um, demo videos and that will take you to quick 
uh, videos which are you know 15 to 30 seconds long they will take you through different key features uh, chart types so if you're trying to explain how drilling works to somebody how the sankey chart works how you can add custom tool tips um, you know we can uh, kind of click through each of these features and uh, options and uh, show that to the um, end users as well so these are the two um, different ways in which you could uh, explore Vitara charts. So, so far I've been focusing exclusively on the basic charts. The reason for this is simple, though there might be n number of, you know, more complicated or more advanced charts or more innovative charts. At the end of the day, I think the, the basic charts are the ones that get used the most so having those little extras in the basic charts whether it's customizing the data label whether it's customizing the tooltip um, you know we've been looking at all of these different features um, i think the tooltip part i hadn't had a chance to show you yet so let me show you that one's a hugely popular one so these types of things you are the ones that are going to get used and give you that incremental value so we want to spend a little bit of time showing you these building blocks of charts um, so that it gives you a comfort level that this is the extra interactivity this is the extra um, aspect of user friendliness that's coming into play here so what do we struggle with when we are building dashboards it's almost always space and the fact that we if we are working with a non-technical audience we have to give them more context and how do we resolve that we are giving them the option for having custom markers you know doing good quadrant bad quadrant background colors thresholds additionally if you do want to put in instructions um, our tool tips come with a free form space so you can put in both static and dynamic information over here so that your users can take actions action one action two you can type in whatever uh, is necessary to convey your information back to the end user and once you apply your tool tips um, it's very very straightforward now for an end user to hover over each data point and understand what information you're giving them and what they need to do with it and how it applies in their business world right so these are again very very small things whether it's the play axis whether it's the tool tips whether it's the threshold markers whether it's the background images all these things will help you communicate that much better with your end user and keep them within the tool and keep them happy so staying in the tool um, brings up another chart which is you know the most popular chart in bi which happens to be our grid chart so when somebody is using grid what do they usually do they compare it with excel and when they can't do the things that they commonly do in excel that's when frustration sets in and people tend to start exporting data and you've lost them so to combat that we've created the vitara grid chart i will not claim that i can do everything excel does but we've tried to incorporate commonly used excel things within the grid so what all do you notice here in the grid a couple of different grids i've shown you i'll walk you through them so that you can you know absorb some of what uh, what features we have incorporated here a simple one is this you know ability to collapse and expand for those of you in healthcare or working in retail you might be breathing a huge sigh of relief because you're working with what 20 30 metrics at any given point on each grid so having the ability to right click on any metric and create groups of metrics so that their you know related metrics are you know just stay together and if you want to expand that group fine if you don't want to see it and you want to save some space you have the option of just you know leaving it there so that it's nicely colla um, uh, collapsed and it doesn't take up a lot of space on your dashboard right so something like this and i'm working with 10 odd metrics here and you can already see i'm saving so much space if you were working with 25 30 40 metrics um, in some of the industries this would be a huge uh, space saver and it's very very intuitive the other thing that excel users like to do is they like to move things around because attributes and metrics are micro strategy constructs we get it we are developers we are working on it but when an end user is looking at it they want to move things around they don't care what's a metric what's an attribute so mixing them up usually entails creating multiple grids and kind of stitching them together and that is 
you know, A, cumbersome, and, and B, if somebody is doing self-exploration, they would just get frustrated. So we have an easy option. You can just drag and drop things. You can pin columns to the left, pin them to the right. You can filter on something. And when you do filter on something, uh, it gives you a little uh, symbol there as well. So for users coming from the Excel world, something like this is very, very intuitive, and they get very happy when they see that. The other new things that we have added in the grid, which you might not have seen before, is now you can right click on any metric and you can start in changing the display style. So here I have a bar chart, so I can make that into a line chart. Um, if I don't like the line chart, I can convert it into a bar chart. If I don't like um, lines and bars, I can go back to being a number. Um, and even if you have a number, you can do like thresholds. And in addition to thresholds, even in a grid, you can display custom markers. So why custom markers in the grid, you might ask. This is you know, a data that all of us understand. Uh, and, and, you know, this is um, just the top 500 movies all time on IMDb. And what we've done is we are just showing their IMDb rating in stars. So all we've done is instead of showing this display as a number, we are displaying that as a custom marker. And within the custom marker, we have chosen stars. Right. So this is now making the data so much more intuitive um, and it's something that we've seen. We understand the concept of ratings and this could be not just for movies, but if you have customer support ratings, if you're in the financial services and you're launching different products or if you have portfolios and you have ratings for that or if you're you know selling to a particular market you have good feedback bad feedback that kind of data so there could be so many different use cases where you want to present something visually and this would be a great way to do that i mean you can of course do regular bar charts regular line charts to show the trends of how things are going this is over and beyond what is already possible in there so uh, something like this would just add a little bit more pizzazz to your dashboards and it's not just about shiny objects right it also has to have value so we try to think of the different scenarios where you know different customers would find value and we found so many use cases from our customer base we've had school districts um, which were doing ratings for um, the different uh, students and their risk scores. And they were you know, planning to use this. Like I said, portfolio managers from financial services really liked it because they wanted to you know, show the ratings of their products. From healthcare, we got very good feedback because they also wanted to show you know, some uh, the drug ratings or satisfaction scores, things like that. So regardless of industry, um, you're working with grid, you're able to do Excel like things and show your users more, which would be just, you know, right click and do it. You're not a bunch of coding, just very, very simple changes uh, uh, to the grid and kind of make it your own. So look at the difference in look and feel from something like this to something like this. And these are at the click of a button, change the theme, add the colors, add your ratings and the custom images and you're good to go. Right. So it just. Um, helps you uh, to kind of take your dashboards there to the next level. This is the set of basic charts so far, whatever I have shown. I'm just going to pause here, see if there's any questions that have come up in the chat window on any of these topics that I have covered so far before I jump into the next set of charts. Because uh, the next set of charts are new and interesting charts that we have found. Uh, maybe it's a competitive chart. Maybe it's charts that some customers have suggested to us. Uh, maybe it's charts that we have uh, seen working very, very well in some situations and incorporated that. We do have a total of 30 charts. I'm not going to be walking through every single one of them today, but what I'm going to be attempting to do is give you a, a feel for the possibilities. So I'm going to be showing you some KPI charts, some um, uh, some interactive charts, as well as uh, some of the new charts that we got updated here to the to the product. So any questions? I'm not seeing anything in the chat window. So if you think of something for me as we go along, um, do feel free to kind of. Um, update in the chat window. I will be periodically switching um, to kind of see if there's any comments or questions there. All right. 
So going back to, to, to new and interesting charts, um, I think I said this in the earlier uh, part of the presentation, but it bears repeating. Uh, sometimes when I say we have you know, 30 plus new charts, people expect a lot of complexity around it. And our goal is the opposite of that because we want things to be simple. We want people to use it without any training. We want people to intuitively get it. Um, so a lot of our charts are not complex at all. This is a case in point which really gets the point home. Um, it's calendars. We wake up, we live by our calendars, we run our lives by calendars. So we should be able to run our businesses and display how our businesses are doing. They ebbs and flows in a calendar format as well. So this is a beautiful representation uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a retail example. So we are trying to show sales and foot traffic. But if you take the example of, let's say, customer support data, this is at a day level, customer cases, when are they high? How is your staffing looking? Or if you're in the hospitality business and you're looking 30 days, 60 days, 90 days out, how are your bookings looking? And where do you want to offer some deals to get the bookings up? Anything like this would play really well to this kind of a display. But let's say that you want to go to a de more detailed level. Let's say you're running um, a production um, uh, and you want to get our level detail. You can take this down, roll it down, or go up and roll it up to a week level. So let me start off by showing you hours in a day and how that looks like. So again, if we go by the example of either production, every second delay, every second of you know stoppage could cause thousands of or millions of dollars depending on what you're manufacturing in the production line right so maintenance outages staffing has to be monitored for every second every hour so it's a calendar like this showing you where are the risks where do you have short staff where do you have maintenance windows coming up would be very very useful in that context or if you want to look at the calls coming in through customer support and you want to figure out do you want to have more people on a particular window maybe you're getting more calls you know during working hours and during the off hours there's really not that much happening so you can adjust your rotations based on that or if you are a financial services or a healthcare company and you want to look at your revenues and trends for buying patterns more at the week level rather at the day level you can roll it up so it's a very very flexible uh, kind of a calendar display so you can take it down you can roll it up and every single chart that i've been showing you so far you can use it as a filter to control other things and it's not just that vitara charts will play well with other vitara charts they work equally well with micro strategy charts so you can mix and match as well and we do that so when you're navigating through our landing page there might be reports dashboards what have you where we have a mix of both uh, vitara charts as well as micro strategy charts so there's absolutely no um, limitation in that they will only talk to each other all right so this is the the calendar chart and uh, i personally find it one of our most intuitive charts and i think this is definitely one of the most popular charts this has actually been submitted by a customer they monitor server uh, up times and they wanted it in a calendar format so ideas uh, do come through from our customer base and we do incorporate as much as possible uh, we are very much you know a growing company and we we definitely uh, appreciate the fact that a lot of our product growth has been um, driven by customers who have engaged with us who have given us ideas given us suggestions as to how to make things more applicable to real life more use cases Cases, how do we cover them? So if you are going through Vitara charts, you have some comments, you have some feedback, definitely get in touch with us because we're very, very open to a dialogue around that. All right, so that was the calendar chart, um, which was an interesting um, addition for us. And the next one I'd like to show you is the waffle chart. Now this one um, has been a very interesting addition. And as I was going through the Financial Times option, what I realized is this uh, this chart particularly has been used um, in, in various forms. They've actually called it three different names, but it's the exact same chart that you can manipulate within 
um, micro strategy and create three charts out of that. So let me kind of show you um, how it's been done. So this is the waffle chart showing you the distribution of the world population. So you can see Asia is in the light orange there and almost 59% of the world population is with Asia. This is called as a pictograph um, in the um, Financial Times and they use it for as a chart to show composition. So if you go to the visual uh, vocabulary here and you're trying to look at correlation or composition, I think they have it in um, you know, one of these uh, charts, I think, part to whole, yeah. Now one of these elements, uh, you can um, see this same chart. There you go, this is called the pictogram. So instead of showing it, um you know in one way we actually have a three different flexible ways for showing it so you can show the pictogram like this or you can show it as a list option so the same thing gets picked out so if you're trying to show different products how much are they contributing to the overall revenue or different regions how are they comparing and then you want to change the marker type use something specific to your industry um you know pick the right shape you can absolutely do that um, and the third way in which this can be displayed is this kind of a grid waffle. So this is something that those of you that follow politics and opinion polls, you would probably see a lot of. Um, this is a very, very intuitive way of showing percentage distribution because you immediately kind of get it and no explanation needed. Sometimes when you present the same data in a pie chart, it becomes difficult to tell apart two slices that are similar but not quite alike. Uh, whereas a 15% and a 17% or a 15 and a 20% of a pie slice would look very similar to each other. Uh, whereas this grid waffle is a great replacement for that uh, to make the point and you can even customize the colors, you can customize the symbols um, and, and you can make it so that your users um, are able to uh, take something from pop culture which everybody is familiar with and then put it in the context of the business world, right? So this is a is a popular new addition as well. Um, now coming to kind of KPIs, here also we've observed the same phenomenon. You kind of take charts that are simple and easy to understand, but then you add those few extra things and that really makes the difference, right? So take this chart, for example, this is called as a butterfly chart, also called as a tornado chart. So if you've worked with Power BI, you've probably seen a lot of this chart because this is a very popular chart in, in that space. It is simply a bar chart but you draw on both sides of the axis for comparing two different metrics and we are always comparing it right? how did we do currently how did we do in the past so a versus b this year last year this period last period you take any industry healthcare retail um, government all of us you know regardless of industry do that how and tend to compare ourselves with past performance so this is a great chart for that and you'll notice the other things over here like the play axis and the small multiple things that we were looking at earlier so if you want to look at the same chart you've created it for different this is canadian data so you can see different provinces and how they pan out now in addition to one you know province level data if you also want to see customer segment b2b uh, b2c how are you doing you can drag it into the small multiple section so your chart repeats so this is applicable for all our charts i might have missed showing you the small multiples feature early on when i was showing you the basic charts but this is available for line chart bar chart pie chart you construct it for one dimension you do not have to rebuild it n times if you want to do two different dimensions you just drag the second one um, across to the small multiple section and this is really useful when you're trying to do more complex charts let's say you take a waterfall chart and if you're able to kind of do small multiples around that that's super helpful um, and and play axis as well right so you're looking at provinces and you're looking at particular you know performance and so forth and all that's great but if you want to break it to the product level you don't have to you know rebuild the chart because you'd have hundreds of products you could just put it in the play axis and you know see product over product how things are going if you find something interesting you can just pause and you know get your data understand the information why were office machinery performing so much better than last year whereas in the rest of the products you don't see that much of a discrepancy between this year and last year um, so you kind of you know scroll through that data very very quickly to understand your trends and patterns and you'll notice our play axis works not just for you know time-based 
but also it works uh, for any other dimension. So the play is not restricted uh, to time-based aspects as well. So this is another one um, which I find very, very useful. Um, traditional KPI um, representations like your uh, you know, gauges, we have plenty of options there. You have this traditional kind of angular gauge, which all of us are used to seeing in our vehicles. So this one's of course available and you can customize the colors, you can customize the number of stops, you know, you can customize the needle color, all, all such things you should assume are already available um, what other things can we do with the gauges right that's that should be our, our our starting point so we have a couple of different alternatives to the gauges we have a kpi animated gauge and in this one the level of the water is proportional to the achievement data so it shows the exact same data as the angular gauge um, here instead of having different stops you'll have levels of water and you can color the water so you can put your thresholds on top of this and say if you don't hit a particular number or if you're hitting a particular number color the data a different way but in especially in in you know such crisis times when everybody's at the executive level is watching for the bottom line looking at performance indicators on an hourly daily basis having this kind of a you know representation which grabs the eyeballs it can immediately you know be used for you know stop like kind of a thing you can you can put it up on big screens you can you know, put it up on your executive KPI dashboards. You can put a little image to go with it. So on all our dashboards, you can apply background images, which to get tied to that specific uh, visualization so that it's another way to kind of customize it for your requirement, right? So it doesn't have to span the entire dashboard. It gets tied uh, to that specific widget. So this is another way. And then the third way uh, that you could represent something similar achievement data is by using this uh, ring KPI chart. And uh, this is also called sometimes as the progress chart or the radial chart, very, very popular with Tableau users. Um, you can do up to three concentric circles. So circle A, B, C, or you can just use a single circle as I'm demonstrating at the um, bottom half of the dashboard here or all three circles at the top half of the dashboard here. So uh, examples where this could potentially apply. Let's say you are in the financial services industry, loans uh, analysis of the risk loans and how many are defaulted, how many are you know, being paid on time, how, how, how much percentage do you have um, loans that were issued at, you know, uh, at a higher risk? Those types of data are interrelated and they can all be displayed in three concentric circles as an example. Um, or if you're doing customer support, the number of calls answered out of those, how many were successfully resolved, how many got escalated, things like that. When you have related metrics, you don't have to spread them out on your dashboard. This is one way, uh, especially on mobile, this looks really nice. The use case that I was explaining to you, it's actually used um, by one of our customers for their mobile app that goes out to their executives on a regular basis. So this is, uh, again, a modern, more modern way of representing um, the same gauge performance data. Right. So the um, these are all you know charts that I've been wanting to show, which are um, again new and interesting add-ons uh, from a microstrategy perspective. And uh, I'm trying to provide also context in terms of use cases, so you can see precisely where they are used. Additionally, I started out the presentation talking about the financial services visual vocabulary. So a lot of these charts that I'm showing you make their appearance in the visual vocabulary as well. So you can commit it from you know, two different directions. You can start off saying, I want to do this type of analysis, what charts would be applicable? Or you might be very, very sure that I want to, you have a mental picture of what you want to display it as, and then you can work off of that. So the gallery is suitable for both options. When you, once you land at the gallery, the Vitara gallery, you have the option of going to the first tab, which lays it out by chart type. So you click on the individual chart, which you want to do, and then you know play with it. Or if you're trying to explore and figure out suitable charts based on the type of analysis, you work 
look uh, at it from a different angle, you go to the visual vocabulary, you look at the specific item uh, or the specific type of analysis and kind of dig from there. Right, so those are the two different options. Um, and in one of those charts, if you're looking at some kind of a distribution um, kind of a chart and you have a large volume uh, that you're trying to analyze, this chart has been um, really helpful. In fact, one of our customers who is the head of a, um, a BI uh, reporting group in, uh, in a bank in Europe, they've used this to analyze their LinkedIn connections to understand uh, where their LinkedIn connections are located and which industries do they work in. So he's actually posted this analysis using Vitara charts on his LinkedIn profile and it's shared on our profile as well. So if you want to take a look at that one later, it's really interesting. But this basically uh, is like a bubble chart, but without the X and Y axis because they are not relevant over here. And what we do with this is we look at the size of the bubble as well as the color of the bubble. So here I have products but let's say you were looking at employees um, and then you're trying to figure out which department has the highest spend uh, overall right or in the products which products are making the most money um, anything like this if you're trying to do you could you know just add a, a grouping level one step higher to it so here a product and subcategory if it's employee employee plus department and once you add that you just go to the pack bubble and ungroup it so it's all you know comes together and once it's grouped up, you can really uh, get an idea of the trends and the patterns here. So if it were departments, you can see depart these three departments. You have a lot of people here splitting an almost equivalent amount compared to this other uh, department where the level of employees is higher, but also their take home um, packages are way higher compared to the average salaries in this next department. Or if you're looking at it from a product perspective, um, you know, you have a whole number of products, each of which is contributing, you know, little by little and, you know, coming up with a nice revenue number for you. But if you look at product margin, you know, you have a really high margin on these other set of products. So you probably want to be trying to expand, you know, your base and increase the higher margin products in your inventory, right? So different ways in which you, you know, you can look at data. And if you were trying to dig through this same information, we using multiple charts, it would take you a while. At a glance, uh, some chart like this can broadly help you come up with some trends and patterns. So this, this is another chart, which I really like as well. Um, unconventional but I think you know it's it's easy to understand and it's something that uh, I think is catching traction I've seen you know three four different customers really like it and start to use it the last chart that I want to cover here is the waterfall chart I know it's a little bit of a technical chart in the sense that it's largely used for financial data or stock taking data in the retail world or um, any kind of uh, financial statement that you might present in the different uh, uh, you know kind of industries but I I find that it's it's one of those charts which you know kind of make or break your dashboard so we've spent a lot of time uh, enhancing the waterfall chart so I just want to show a few things here so you can take a waterfall chart and uh, you can do a lot of things with it you can of course do simple things like you know color changes and those and so forth but in addition to that you can shift the waterfall to make it either a horizontal chart or if you're more comfortable, you can make it into a vertical chart as well. This is just a um, financial statement, it, regardless of industry or they, the financial statement, even MicroStrategy could have a financial statement like this, which would get published quarter over quarter as a public company. So this would be a great way to kind of represent that. Now within these financial charts, you are, what oftentimes happens is you, you, you have the need for um, creating different groups. So let's say you're just looking at expenses, right? So you want to you know, be able to group all your expenses and look at them together. So typically what that would involve is you would have to um, create sub uh, metrics within MicroStrategy, which would group things together. And if the 
um, groupings change or if you're starting to you know define things differently then those submetrics have to be altered um, instead of doing that the option that we provide is you can just go in into the waterfall and create any groupings that you want um, it can create an additional subtotal and if it's like a negative value that you want to deduct you can do that or if there is specific um, uh, items that you are creating um, that would that would be um, just for display purposes so let's say you have a result before tax you don't want it to add up to the rest of your total you can just make that non-additive and show that in a special color so that if you have any of these manual adjustments calculations display of information just just because you want to communicate something internally you can kind of do that and if you have other things that you want to break down let's say you have personal expenses and you want to break that by department you could do that or if you have income um, coming through regionally and you want to break current year income year over year you could do that so metric by metric you can go ahead and set up you know whether it's additive you want to break that further is it aggregatable does it require any special colors um, you know do you want to display it horizontally do you want to display it vertically any requirement that you can think of for presenting your financial services data in a waterfall we have thought of that scenario because we work with a really large number of customers surprisingly who you know need waterfall charts so this is one of those charts um, that though it's a bit bit heavy and technical chart it's really really something that is extremely flexible and we encourage you to you know have a look at it and see the different options and see how that might help you out so uh, given the exhaustive number of charts i haven't been able to cover every single one of them and all the different variations but i hope i have given you a glimpse of the possibilities Certainly, if you have any questions, I will be looking at the chat window right now and trying to address that in the context of this uh, presentation today. But if you think of other things as well, right after the presentation or as you go um, with your development process later on, feel free to reach me. I'm very, very accessible and I'd be more than happy to you know, do um, uh, deep dives into specific questions as well. So I'll just pause here to see if there's any questions from the group. Otherwise, I do have some standard set of frequently asked questions that I'll go through but I'll just wait to see if anybody has any comments or questions in the chat window for me. I am not seeing any questions from the attendees. I'll just go through some of my standard questions and check back in again with the um, chat window so the first uh, question that we always get with vitara is which versions of microstrategy does this work is this only 2020 related no it works for all versions of microstrategy we have customers uh, believe it or not all the way in 10.4 and of course we have some cutting edge customers who are in 2020 so we ensure that we do a full battery of tests for each release that microstrategy has and all the sub releases at the quarter level as well and as long as micro strategy supports the release we will absolutely support it um, how do you try this in a hassle free way without any investment we offer 30 day trials for commercial use if you are just wanting to explore it on your own it is free you can download it you can put it on your desktop standalone and you know workstation desktop and just explore it you have it on a macbook you have it on a windows machine no problem it should work everywhere Right. So if you also want to learn a little bit about the licensing model, uh, we have a very flexible licensing model. So we do enterprise based licenses. And for smaller customers, if you are wanting to do more along the lines of user based licenses, we do that also. We don't sell individual charts. We sell the whole package because as you've seen, a lot of features are common across charts. So like play axis, you have custom data labels, custom tool tips. So we don't you know, stand alone separate that. We have a common code base for all of that and we maintain it as a package. We sell it as a package and we support it as a package as well. 
So in terms of what types of charts are supported, how do we keep growing and changing this, all information is available on our website. So if you want to see our latest release, you want to download it, you just go to vitaracharts.com, click on the downloads page and you'll see what is the latest release, what are the new features that have been incorporated, there's release notes associated with it, which tells you the different things that are happening there and you can see the different chart types on our user guides as well. Um, the other question that comes up is, is Vitara chat supported for mobile? Yes, absolutely. MicroStrategy is a market leader in mobile, so anything we build for MicroStrategy, if we don't build it for mobile, it would be a huge miss. So all our charts would work for mobile as well. And for some of those customers who are still using report services documents, all the examples I've shown you have been on dossier, but if you want to see some of these on report services, everything is compatible with report services as well. So you can just go to our gallery and click on the link below for report services documents, and you can see them in action for report services also. The functionality is identical for dossiers as well as the traditional report services documents also. I just haven't had time uh, to run through it during the demo, but you can certainly explore it on your own if you go to our gallery page. So that kind of concludes my frequently asked questions as well. I'm just going to check the chat window again to see if there's any questions from the audience um, and, and, and see if I can address those. Nope, so far I don't see any questions here, uh, but if you think of something, feel free to reach me anytime. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope it was um, you know, worth your while to sit through this webcast. We will be sending um, a thank you note along with a recording of the webcast. So if you want to share it with any of your colleagues, feel free to you know, pass the message around. And if any of you end up purchasing the software, please do mention that you've attended the webcast so that we can give you a nice discount at the end for the product as well. Thank you so much and have a great day.